for today. Hello and welcome, friends. Thank you so much. We're going to record these sessions so that the replays will be available. I am so excited to see this wonderful crowd. I shared as a few people were coming in. I brought the coffee with me in case you all would like some. Uh, it is a little early in my time zone, but I really would like to ensure that we've got some representation really in as many parts of the project as we can. So I am known to do silly things like get up extra early, as Pooja can attest to, to go to contributor days and all of these wonderful things. Um, so Hari would like some coffee. Yes, I could get you the coffee very soon, Hari. So to give you a bit of context for today, uh, yesterday we, we were able to also have with us Georg Link, who uh, shared briefly at the beginning of the replay video there. He was only with us for five minutes. Uh, but I would like to draw attention to that so that folks know if you happen to see Georg Link popping up and answering any of our questions, I'm about to share why. Uh, but that was the way we kicked off for yesterday. For today and for this recording in this session, I have a bit of an agenda, although it's not hard in set in stone by any means. It's more to get conversation points happening. So by your presence here, that indicates to me that you're all thinking about what does it mean for the WordPress project to be healthy? And what does it mean for our contributor base to be sustainable? And uh, as a quick caveat to that, I will draw brief attention to the top of the sustainability team site, where it lists the three pillars about the sustainability team. Those being uh, sustainability for this team, as it currently stands, means Social sustainability, finding ways to increase the diversity and well-being of the WordPress community. That would include contributor work as well. Uh, not limited, though, by that. Environmental, reducing energy and waste consumption in the development and usage of the WordPress software and its community activities. And then economical, finding ways to economically support contributions to the project for those who need it. So I believe that... Some of what we're looking at right now can be both from the social and the economical standpoint, right? This kind of works towards some of those goals. What do those things need? They might need some data to help make some informed decisions. So we have identified not, not only these audiences, but if you want to think about contribution in WordPress and who are stakeholders, we certainly know the project leadership Josefa would absolutely be a stakeholder. Um, and having some data that might be more representative than what we see just during core releases. I love the core release props. We had a great discussion yesterday about those. Uh, however, that's not our only metric as a project. Organizational stakeholders, for those of us that may have employers and those employers need to make some informed decisions those absolutely would be stakeholders. Individuals, uh, many of you I know that are here, some of you are wide open to receive financial compensation for contributing if opportunities provide themselves for that. So you might want some data points. I know some folks that shared recently with me as I was kicking around some of these ideas that they manually tally things that they are doing and it's reflected in the make slash updates regular posts. And those are numbers that they are able to then provide to the people that might be backing them. Other individuals, we have some folks in the project like Dr. Andy Fragan, amazing person, works in the core team, um, but also that's his his downtime. Courtney, uh, I can't hear you anymore. Uh -oh. I don't know if I was the only one. Anybody but... else? I and... can. I still can hear you. Well. I can hear Courtney. Thank you. Uh, yeah. I can hear you too. Thank you. Okay. So uh, Andy Friggin, if anyone has had an opportunity, left a comment on one of the preceding posts. Andy and Colin did a considerable amount of work towards getting the rollback features into core. And Andy shared some thoughts kind of related to props. Andy represents an individual, but also his gig, his main job is to be an operating room trauma surgeon. So uh, we have some people in the project that might want different types of numbers. Andy does want data, but it's not necessarily um, what most folks in core would currently look to as their data sets. So there could be some details to come related to some of those. And then first and foremost are the contributor teams. And right now with us, I see polyglots. I see 
sustainability. I see test, I see training, I see TV, um, probably more community, certainly more than I know. And many of you kind of wear a couple of hats and might be in a couple of different teams. When stats dashboards first came up, um, I was in a conversation with Andrea Middleton, oh, 2020. Um, and eventually we saw a series of posts and then Matt spoken about it. And every time it's been in this frame of what do the teams need? How can the teams better get metrics about what work needs to happen and what's being done? How do they elevate the work of the team? How do people considering contributing to a team assess what is the work that needs to happen? And so consider this a discovery call. We really want to make sure that we have an opportunity to brainstorm together and to understand each other's needs and how as a whole project, we can perhaps find some tools that will help us get there. Uh, we're certainly not locked in on any one tool, but you will see that we are trialing one. And so the first one that we're trialing, Izada did a good bit of the work on these dashboards. So Izada, if you feel like you would like to ask uh, to point me towards anything in particular by all, all can do that. Um, the first tool that we are trialing, I'm so sorry about this. Let me pull every time I go to share my screen, zoom hides all of your wonderful faces behind a different app. And so I'd like to see you while I'm also sharing. There we go. Now I see where you are. Uh, <laughs> so you should see uh, Baturja here. So for context, this is a an organization that has pulled together multiple open source projects plus applied some of their own technology to this as well. So Baturja as an organization, a lot of the dashboards that you'll see in this quick preview are uh, related to another open source project, Grimoire Lab. And Grimoire Lab is under the hood of many of the options that are out there. Not all of them, but many. For instance, Linux Foundation has taken it and applied Grimoire Lab to Linux Insights, their proprietary version of tracking stats. So we're going to look at Paterja. And I mentioned Georg a little bit ago. Georg is both a contributor to Grimoire Lab and also works at Paterja. Um, and so if you see that in the preview yesterday or you see Georg's name popping up into some channels in Slack, et cetera, that would be why. We are not locked in on this tool. It's just the first that we're trialing. And I can't wait to find out what Izada learned yesterday at an event about it. <laughs> uh, so that would be great. So uh, again, a big thanks to um, Izada for all of the work on getting this set up. And there's also a part of this they call sorting hat. It just means that um, we're matching up somebody's GitHub name and the WordPress profile and figuring out this is them in track and GitHub and here's the organization that they may represent or they may not, they might be an individual. So we're just helping to put the pieces that are publicly available together. <laughs> right, uh, so that's the idea. Right now this tool is only hooked up to GitHub and at the time it is not publicly available for anyone without a login to see. There are some pros and cons to that. I would love to have a conversation if you all know of anybody that has a really strong background in data science and handling big data. Those kind of contributors in the project, we haven't had a lot of opportunity for them before, but this is a big one. Um, the story that you craft with data, when you do big surveys, think about our annual survey that we complete, that those uh, the questions in our annual survey help tell the predictable story we have. Um, with just, what are the results this year? However, when you complete something with this type of data, there's a lot that you could do with that. So one of the things you could see here is the different organizations that are there. Um, I can actually go in and set my time frame instead of the last 90 days. You know, we're now a 21 year old project. So let's see. Uh, now I will tell you, we weren't using GitHub 21 years ago. Uh, I, we might've been just, um, Cowboy coding, maybe not, but you know, 21 years ago. So we could see that the data can change based upon their Sergey who merges almost everything that goes into a release. Amazing. Um, so we see what the data can reflect. You could see Boren who had a long time contributor to the project um, also handled a lot of commits. And Nason still <laughs> makes the top three. Oh, that's hilarious. Uh, Nason's one of our 
really, really veteran contributors still listed as one of the core core leads, I think, um, in the core handbook. So under GitHub issues, this one's going to focus in on things that are open and closed. We can get data about, um, again, who submitted the issues, how many different repos they're connected to, et cetera. You'll see, because we are only hooked up to GitHub at this time, that there is uh, quite a bit of GitHub stats available this way. Although this tool can also integrate Slack. Uh, Georg shares with me that this tool would not be able to see threaded messages. So for things that happen in meetings, best to not necessarily thread everything. We don't have that hooked up yet. That's if we decide to continue on. We're on a, a trial account at this time. And Automatic is helping us fund that. Much, much appreciative of that. But long term, that needs to be a broader project expense and not solely an automatic expense based upon what Automatic is shared with us. So uh, we're exploring what those could look like. You'll see that there are different repos here. I haven't dug in enough to know yet. One of the things that would be really interesting um, is to, as if we continue to look at, at this tool in particular, to have a way to say, show me these repos that are part of this team. Some teams may have more than one repo. Um, these these repos go with this team. This is the couple of Slack channels. Think about Core, they have, I don't know, a dozen Slack channels. Uh, so to be able to kind of pull together some of those things and make a, a variety of this that says, these show me the data related to all of the Core entities, right? So that's something that is kind of in my mind. We'll, we'll see when we can get there. Um, and then, uh, we have, there's, there is a lot more. Izada, I'll ask you, is there something that you would like me to draw more attention to in this software? Um, so first of all, thanks a lot, Courtney, for the, um, the overview. Um, there are, th what this software offers right now, even if it's just GitHub, it's already huge so i don't necessarily think that it may be a great idea to go into all details right mm. I, I think that it could become more confusing uh some those um, the, the, the potential that i see now probably very relevant for all teams are uh, the possibility to check the activities on specific repositories. It would be great to see what projects need more help. So we can also address when it comes to sponsored contributors, we can help mm -hmm. organization address their like their efforts on specific teams that need more help. It is very cool, the possibility here to see the retention and churn rate. So mm -hmm. see where we are losing contributors, where we are getting more and more contributors. Yeah, I like I see l a huge possibilities. Uh, I think that before deciding what to use and how to use it, I think that we really need to study and decide what is relevant for us to know. Because it, mm -hmm. I don't think that all this information that we have here are necessarily relevant to all the teams at all times. So and. There is there are two points that makes me wonder made me wonder if this is the tool like the right tool for us which are first the price we're still waiting for a um, for a quote for a detailed quote um, if we need to include if we're going to include all the sources that we have from for contribution because it doesn't feel um necessarily useful to everyone or complete or exhaustive to just focus on on github yeah. and so we need to see how much is going to be the cost because i we think for what they have shared not officially yet that it could be a huge amount of money mm -hmm. and second the second point is that um Yes, we can customize. Uh, it's great. We can change, create uh, different customizations, uh, also uh, custom filters. But at the end of the day, we will be always depending on them. So it wouldn't mm -hmm. be something that 
um, people contributing to this project can really jump in and change whatever we want when we want. So these are the are the two things that I'd love all of us to consider also when when we'll have to make a decision. But um, I think that it is super powerful to have something that allows us to have <laughs> this type of overview and also yeah. become more granular when, yeah. uh, for example, we need to, mm, the, the time, the efficiency, the efficiency panel, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. it is super, something that in potential, it is super cool to have because uh, again, if we, if each team needs to check, okay, where to put their efforts, these are great tools because we don't want to, I believe nobody wants to duplicate efforts or be working on similar things into different ways. Or yeah. we see that there are more impactful projects for a team that are not having enough support or specific, we could understand specific type of, um, of issue that remains open for the most, like the longest time. And so we could, as teams, yeah. we could make our decision on how to use the effort that we have at all times. So yes, I, for the moment, I mean, if folks are interested in checking in more and, and like find out more about the different panels, I believe that we can um, we can create a, a moment for that. But I don't think that it is necessarily useful to see everything now in this, this call as we have limited time. Yeah, yeah. There is a way to filter some of these things down. And I definitely do want to open up for questions and answers. I wanted to note, both Izada and I have both mentioned price. This would be, to my knowledge, the first time that um, a tool for the entire project is something that we are looking, if we decide to go with it, the cost varies based upon, for instance, if I ask, let's hook up all the team sites, RSS feeds because this does not yet do track nor WordPress revisions. So I think about teams where that work, yesterday we had with us um, Mike Autori, who is one of the folks working on GatherPress. And I hear GatherPress may be able to replace Meetup. Meetup.com used to work with this, but they changed their APIs. And we have concerns as a project about uh, continuing with Meetup either way. So the folks that are working on GatherPress uh, share update via Angela and Mike Autori that um, they're quite close to getting greenlit to set up GatherPress on one of the multi-site parts of our project, which is delightful. If you think about that and you go then to WordPress revisions, if we were to find a tool, we'd want to track the people that revise the handbooks, the people that revise docs or learns website, those uh, camps. Right, We want to account for some of these types of things that would be best not by just an RSS feed because that will only attribute the first pers pers person that posted. I think I need more coffee. Uh, <laughs> so that to say, um, th there is there are some additional data points that would be helpful when we're looking holistically, even just within teams at all the places that the teams do work so that people are accurately represented. And then I want to draw quick attention before I move on to Joaquin about an idea that came up yesterday uh, with Hari. We were discussing making use of our five for the future. Birgit Olsum joined us, which was wonderful to have some DEI insight and some of the ideas around privacy. I live in the United States, so I'll let you assume what you will of privacy there compared to things like EU privacy, GDPR, and all of those wonderful things. So um we were thinking Birgit was advocating for making things an opt-in rather than an opt-out for participation. One of the other thoughts too is that we could leverage companies uh, could access the data about their contributors, perhaps by logging in to manage their five for the future listing. The same thing with individuals, because some of that data may not be things that you really want on your .org profile or somewhere else super public. But if you wanna get just the insights about yourself, um, a lot of these tools do offer APIs, and so it's things that we could explore. Those are just some of the high-level things that came up yesterday, and I want to open it up for some good conversation. I'll stop screen share, but you've got the... Oh, I should say, um, I do have a link for all of you that is public. This one is not the WordPress project. This one is chaos, 
uh, which is Community Health Analytics in Open Source Software. It is a Linux Foundation project. Sorry for that big long link. I hope it's, yes, I think the whole link went through. That's good in the chat. But it is a dashboard that has more data sources connected to it and is a public demo. So this is not our project. This is specifically a different open source project. But you can see what it looks like when somebody hooks up Slack and maybe some demos about what they do. So feel free on your own to take a look at that. But I will stop talking and sharing my screen. And I see Joaquin's hand up first. Hello. Um, thank you, Courtney, for this great presentation. Some concepts are much more clear to me. Um, I, I'd like to raise some concern about the data. Uh, well, I, I'd like to cover a couple of topics, but the first one is uh, raise uh, some concern about uh, GitHub uh, data. Because um, I also have manipulated it. I created some dashboards internally and played with it myself. Mm. And um, someone in the community uh, warned me that some attributions uh, might not be correct, right? Because uh, mm -hmm. GitHub has some limitations. Like for instance, if you close a ticket, an issue, it doesn't mean that you are the only person who worked on that uh, on that uh, issue, right? Sure. So there's a system that which is very manual, which is called props. Props to Courtney, props to Isota, props to whoever has worked on that. And that data is probably not being pulled right now by Viterja. So I think this, this data may be is lacking some information and is lacking some contributors that are not the primary ones who close the ticket or stuff like that. So we we will need or Viterja or whoever is in charge uh, of this should uh, um, use uh, regular expressions to capture these props from the comments that uh, people added uh, when they close the, the, the issue. That's uh, on the only the, the first concern I have about this particular topic with uh, GitHub. The second is I, I agree with uh, Isota, that if we follow a path where a company is in charge of building all of this, we can end up with a bottleneck when uh, they cannot, mm -hmm. you know, uh, if we request a new visualization, if we request a change here and there or whatever, uh, maybe they are not able to provide or to fix that on, on time. And, and we don't have enough visibility, what's their workload, uh, if they're involved in many other projects, etc. So I will push for an internal solution. And I actually commented to one of your topics, uh, Corny, suggesting mm -hmm. a pipeline, an ETL, like yeah. extract, transform, and load pipeline that will um, not only cover GitHub, but many other sources. And you yourself have just mentioned that with Harry, you discussed that many other uh, um, apps, like for instance, meetup.com or mm -hmm. I don't know, like, uh, you know, uh, the WordPress ecosystem uses a lot of uh, uh, endpoints and uh, data points, and those could be covered. And I think we have the opportunity right now to think big and, you know, expand the, sc the scope so we can cover uh, all the use cases we can think of with uh, one single um, pipeline that we can build, in my opinion, internally, and with uh, forming a team of people that are knowledgeable with data and, and other solutions. That's yeah, absolutely. I, mm -hmm. Yes, I fully agree with that. I think, too, about our... So you had mentioned in your comments, too, about then also needing the contributor power and the staffing for that. So mm -hmm. one of the, the factors to consider is um, as we're looking to get anything off the ground, um, in terms of starting to not just gather the data, but sustain it and work on having ways of reporting that out. Um, the amount of labor for initial setup, the amount of labor needed for ongoing. And similar to our efforts at using tools like Zoom, Slack, and Meetup in this project, there could be also seasons where, you know, we've looked at scrapping Slack and going to Matrix or some other systems. And so um, it... it Nothing is ever hard set in stone, but I think about, um, and I'm I'm just bringing it as a point to this. I, I'm not saying I'm a decision maker fully, <laughs> but I think about the, um, is it going to be easier for us to also find the contributors versus finding something like Baturja, or we could set up Gromori Lab that covers much of this ourselves and run with some of that um, and open source, uh, use open source tools that are already created. I will say also that um, the data points coming from Baturja 
are able to go into, you could get the APIs and there are some projects that have wanted types of things that Patricia's dashboards don't do, but what it will get, what it can give us is the, the APIs there to build from that. I am forgetting the name of uh, what you can, where you could take those APIs into and build your own custom. I want to say it's open search, but I could be mistaken in that exact information. Don't quote me on it. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, those points are all absolutely heard, Joaquin. Nilo. Okay. <laughs> uh, hello, I wanted to add something to what Joaquin said. Uh, we already have a tool for that uh, that should be extended, which uh, they are actually the, the user profiles. Because in WordPress user profiles, you have the activity log. Uh, where a lot of teams already dump them information. For example, we have there the, the number of uh, strings translated, the organization teams of work you join, the, we already have the contribution to GitHub. Maybe we, we need some, some more detail to that. So if we uh, center our efforts into getting more information into the activity log, then we will just need some kind of visualization tool which could be whatever, uh, Viterja, GraphX, or whatever. Mm -hmm. But uh, the main repository of data will be ours, and we won't be feeding live data to another place. So we can just feed the data we need to be visualize. visualize. Definitely um, understood. We like owning our own data. And <laughs> We're open uh, source. <laughs> maybe the way might be to get people from Meta involved into this. So to, yeah. to get a look, a look of what kind of information we can get from the, the profile feed. Because for example, mm -hmm. props are already there. Yeah, then... one of the, the things related to props that I wanted to mention, props, there is the Slack channel props that people can just give a like a mm -hmm. kudos to people for. The other thing that came up yesterday with David Baumwald was, uh, and we were discussing Andy's predicament, um, that one one identity of props tries to synthesize many data points and david was sharing how somebody may have done a great deal of work and received one prop whereas yeah. uh, if and if this were somebody now in andy's case andy likes to contribute just because andy likes to contribute but if this were someone seeking to have sponsors and wanted to have many points of data a single prop Mm -hmm. Even though they took, you know, yeah, hours same, and hours of work and all of that. Yeah, it, it, it's the same uh, batches. You same it, day, you get the same batch yeah, for whereas, translating one string as for being translating for 10 years. Yeah, and, and having having um, multiple metrics, like one of the metrics, I would encourage folks to take a look. Let me pull chaos's, uh, chaos uh, community. Chaos has a, a whole system of metrics and i only share this because it is something that their entire open source project exists to make tools and metrics um and they are part of the linux foundation and linux foundation absolutely uses a, a lot of these details there are more types of metrics that are used in other open source projects i'm wide open to learn from any other open source projects how they handle all of this uh but there is a i'm giving you the link to the all metrics for your leisurely reading folks not for right now um i do love the idea of integrating further with our profiles in this all metrics one of the metrics is um things like lines of code change well we can't say that's our only metric our only data input but lines of code change would better handle somebody that has just merged something that was a considerable amount like the rollback plugin but, you know, it would take something that was considerable labor and better represented than one thing got merged. <laughs> so it's something that like having, I think, not just one type of metric, but multiple types is still something that we need to consider. Yeah. Yeah. Seeing comments in here. Nora, go for it. Hey, hi. Um, great presentation, by the way. I would like to share with all you a uh, concern I have about this this system, like this one in general. Um, 
I feel this kind of system based in numbers could benefit more uh, teams who work with more focused uh, with uh, sorry, that are more focused on on uploading things to GitHub or to the repos. And I mean in terms of in um rich interest in in have potential sponsors of new contributors. From sustainability team, uh, we see that there are big difference between teams like core or plugins, which can easily measure their workload or whatever in numbers. And other team like mm, ours uh, have a more debate discuss based dynamics, at least for now. So I think in, if we think about a system for this, I think it is necessary, but we need to think in a kind of an operational structure or something of teams so we all can benefit for a system like that. I mean, uh, nowadays sustainability team cannot benefit for uh, um, from a system based in numbers, especially if it is about the repo. So for me, it's not just about the tool, but mm -hmm. we have also to think about a system, or the system uh, teams work. Yeah, yeah. One of the thoughts too, Isada, that I had is that uh, our folks over in design the design team, most of their work happens in Figma. <laughs> so getting that interactivity might be something interesting, I'll just say. Uh, here is a incomplete sheet because it was completed as of three weeks ago, but our project grows and changes. I need to add to it Help Scout, uh, Media Core, and there is a channel for Core Interactivity API that was launched in that window of time. So I, I have three things that I need to add to the list, but I have created a spreadsheet of <laughs> everywhere that I can find that WordPress work happens, and this doesn't include locales. Toby can scold me later, and that's fine. <laughs> so uh, it, there's, there's a lot of places where the teams work, and I agree with you, Nora, that we need to think about all uh, tracking all the different ways that the teams work. Many are using GitHub for basic project management, Trello board, swim lane style type of things these days in GitHub, which is helpful. It's not about the code necessarily in those cases. So yeah. Jesus. Hi. Uh, that, uh, we are we are using uh, indeed in, in Spain. Uh, we are documenting uh, doing the the handbooks and the the WordPress documentation with with Hub, uh, with GitHub, sorry, and now Stella is doing things with us, and it's they great. are for now uh, uh, for now using the 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 panels the 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 projects of GitHub, but we. Uh, we are uh, redact, um, writing the documentation. Our part, the handbooks, uh, is written in in GitHub. Um, everybody is uh, pushing and is doing the 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 contributions in in, in GitHub uh, and contab uh, counting in their in their profiles. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I know that in the training team learns website, as well as um, all of the WordCamp websites, <laughs> uh, all of the meetup group type of systems, most of the team handbooks are not synced to Git, GitHub at all. So that work happens as we do in WordPress, right inside of WordPress. But yes, many of the sites and teams are also syncing those pieces back to GitHub. So it helps from tracking GitHub data, for sure. Sorry, I didn't understand, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Learn.wordpress.org. Ah, yeah, yeah. Not synced to GitHub. So mm -hmm. you would edit inside of WordPress. Most of the make team sites, not locales, their handbooks not synced to WordPress, or I'm sorry, not synced to GitHub edit inside of WordPress, WordCamp sites, same thing. So it is helpful when it is synced to GitHub for 
data points that we can easily get to now, no tools that we are exploring currently could take WordPress editing and revisions and tally that. Yeah, uh, we are. This this is something that we are going to 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 treat in in Work in Europe uh, contributor with uh, mm -hmm. with Estela and Javier Casares, uh, mm -hmm. another uh, another teams because. Uh, there are some countries that uh, they we we are in a kind of um, I don't know how to say in English a, a, a kind of uh, I don't know if some Spanish uh, proyecto piloto <laughs> uh, pilot pilot uh, pi project yeah it, it was <laughs> evident uh, a pilot project in which uh, we are uh, creating the handbook and there the, the technology is prepared but is not launched uh, but there's something someone who knows uh, in meta who, how to launch the the synchronization and for now japan france and another two countries are aware of our work um, and we are going to meet in work in Europe and we are going to talk about this uh, con uh, this contribution. Yeah, that's great. That's really great. <laughs> I, I plan to also be at Europe and uh, after these sessions today yeah, and tomorrow, I want to share a synthesis, share a summary of everything we've done and help that inform how I use my time on Contributor Day. <laughs> uh, mainly, I would like to make use of that opportunity to talk with folks, to get more information, more specific information that would help those of us that are exploring these options consider all the things we need to consider. There are a couple of folks with us that I want to make sure have some opportunity to also share as you're thinking about some of this. If you haven't had a chance yet, if you have raised your hand or not, I would be curious about any thoughts that you might have, um, both for and against what you saw in the demo, for and against any of this information. <laughs> Just thoughts. Uh, let's go, Sorbjorn. I don't think I've I heard you on screen yet. Uh, no, I haven't been talking yet. So um, I just want to make sure that if we go into this and start collecting data and all things, that's very good to get more visibility. But we always need to keep a parallel track of remembering that there are a lot of things happening that will never occur in any data points. I mean, um, when you're preparing a WordCamp, for instance, you have so many things happening just in practical action and life, and you have meetings perhaps on Google or some, somewhere, never be collected, and it's still useful work. And that um, is probably okay. I mean, as, as long as we just remember that we will only see those things that are easier or at least somehow possible to uh, collect automatically and uh, lots of work will still be under the radar. This is true. Long time team rep <laughs> on something that's not release related at all. <laughs> well, it is, but uh, I get that. All right, Milo, you had another idea. Yeah, I only wanted to share a concern about this uh, well, whole project system or whatever, is that uh, for the last years we have seen a trend that big companies uh, want to sponsor people from both the teams that have, uh, say, power, say, decision, power, whatever, mm. and also the teams that have visibility. Mm. So uh, if we even get more visibility to those teams, it may get even harder from people to other teams to get a sponsor. Mm. Because uh, when companies sponsor folks, they want to, uh, they sponsor people to be visible, to say, hey, I did this. 
but if you are sponsoring people from polyglots or from TV or from support, it's not fancy to say, hey, I sponsor some guy who replied to 100 tickets. <laughs> oh, I so feel you, Nilo, on that. Um, so I think also, I, I want to be careful in how I say this. I am a big key component in terms of how GoDaddy sponsors in the project. I speak frequently with the decision makers internally. What would help me in my role for my internal job uh, is to have more data about when the teams say, here is what the teams need and here is the work that's getting done. And of course, a very large company needs to really directly tie it to why it would make sense to the customers. Polyglots, I can absolutely tell you. Polyglots, folks, we need this stuff in other languages because not everybody speaks English. I, as an American, will be the first to tell you this. I am also only bilingual in computer code, not in human language. And I realize how desperately I need translators in my life. Uh, TV. Uh, I know enough to look at that and say, oh gosh, that's all of the videos for learn, especially, and also this wealth of knowledge from camps and meetups. So I've been around the project since 2009. I know how to make the cases, but what I don't have is data. Um, from a, like a plugin, a theme company, a lot of that market is if they are not owned by a bigger company. And I myself, I, I was a contributor uh, up until three years ago, unsponsored for all of that time. So I don't want to lose sight of that type of work. Um, but I understand that smaller plugin and theme companies may have more flexibility in how they choose to sponsor. Um, I'll also mention Birgit shared with me, Birgit Olsum shared that she's working on a, a side project. I think it's probably fine to share with this crowd that uh, would help folks that wish to get sponsored kind of be more visible as something, uh, an option for organizations wishing to sponsor. And so helping make the matches between the two. Um, but again, I think that the people that, that are stakeholder decision makers They'll need data about the various teams and elevating it from the team's perspective, I think will help then work towards some of the concerns that you may have, that, that this one team is significantly further behind. I do think, though, to what you're saying as well about sometimes you need enough critical mass to get the, if you're working with a group of folks all sponsored together from the same organization, you might need a certain measure of critical mass to be able to um, get anything across the finish line in some some of the teams. Thoughts? I <laughs> get it. Juan, you had your hand up as well? Yeah. Um, I agree with all the concerns and, and good ideas that we are all th throwing here, but like I'm partially sponsored by, by Wiglot, but uh, one of the things that came up uh, from the beginning was this uh, how can we measure what you are doing and and mm -hmm. being part of the community team it's not that easy because it's like yeah right now I spend like 50 hours a week in Welcome Europe but that's <laughs> thank you and, <laughs> and I will see you soon the... but thank you <laughs> And at the beginning, uh, I remember when, when we started like one year and a half ago or something like that, I was, I had a spreadsheet where I was uh, putting almost everything I was doing, like uh, meeting with someone or having a call with someone or answering uh, Slack messages for one hour, blah, blah, blah. And it, of course, I'm not doing that now. I, I just say, okay, this is the goal I'm working towards it. Uh, and that is enough for them. Also, I think they would love to have like a real amount of hours or something. But uh, also I see a problem because even, I mean, I love that we have the automatic uh, thing, uh, a way to, to have a dashboard with all that info. And as soon as we have some kind of manual uh, way of adding stuff, then we see what happens with the Five for the Future page like people saying they spend 127 hours a day in the 20 teams and yeah <laughs> and that's also distorting the the reality and then it becomes not useful because if you check many teams like 
wow. And even Where... in the sustainability team, it's, it's a really new one. Uh, and they have an amount of hours that people are saying they are spending there, which they are not. So I don't know really how can we balance this uh, way of having some also manual with the props or or even outdoor credits or I don't I don't know with with not uh, getting all the info wrong so yeah that's definitely understand that want your idea I had shared I don't know if I've ever shared this with Izada I may have shared it with Hari um, <laughs> Puja and I were both training team reps at, at different points in our past and. Uh, we see thousands of people signed up as contributing to the team. We get to the meeting. Where are they? Uh, and do I have a way to say, come here. This is the thing that you said you wanted to help with. Do you know that this exists? Right. Like to be able to get messages to those that say, I would like to do this thing within the training team. Contact me when you have work on this thing, proofreading or something, you know, uh, contact me when there's that. We have no mechanism for that at this time. And certainly the 2000 people that say that they're part of the team are not showing up. Uh, so I, I agree with you, Juan. Joaquin, I see your hand up next. Yes. Um, also responding to Juan here, um, there's a lot of unstructured data in WordPress. Um, unstructured mm -hmm. means like someone adds a word here and we have to interpret that as a something valid as a data that we are processing. Like uh, for instance, the props thing uh, or what you're doing in an Excel, et cetera. In my opinion, uh, the the right language to process all of this and the right language to connect to with APIs uh, is uh, Python, right? Because uh, everybody writes uh, thinking of Python as uh, the potential communicator uh, with data these days. Um, so I believe that uh, once we have the an API, getting the data from the API and transforming it with uh, Python. I think you mentioned, uh, Corny, that that could be a pain, <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and that's true eventually. But I think if we, if uh, we have like someone spending, I don't know, like two or three days on that data source, that can be handled, and all the panels that we get after that will flow like naturally in a much more, uh, you know, easy way. So uh, again, if we have a couple of folks in the community that are knowledgeable about this particular language and how to process data from, from the outside, I think we can handle like multiple sources in a not so difficult way. And in my opinion, I I, I, um, I actually tried uh, and tested the WordCamps uh, the API and did mm. some stuff for myself, uh, you know, my computer and whatever. And it was literally easy, right? With uh, uh, Python and community, uh, probably with other other software, like for instance, again, meetup.com, we will need the credentials and stuff. But uh, to me, it's doable. And it's something that like many companies are doing nowadays. And uh, there are like uh, a lot of uh, um, uh, features that can facilitate that using, especially again, Python as a language uh, communicator with that. Mm -hmm. Is that a, I saw your hand in there too. Uh, yes, thanks. Um, I want to share something um, because a concern that I have is that every time we discuss, even if, uh, if we are the same group, group of people or different group of people, I believe that then um, it's easy to start to um, follow the instinct of putting everything in the same box. And for me, this is a, a risk that we, are, we might be take in, in this conversation, which is uh, what is gonna be, like, what is the reason why Teams mm -hmm. wants a dashboard? Because I don't see the same goals for a team dashboard um, to be the same that an individual contributor um, needs to show mm -hmm. here their contribution, like their sponsors, how, what they're doing. I feel that uh, there are different needs and not all of like not all of them should be treated the same way. Mm -hmm. Because um, one example, um, like all of us who are full time sponsored or partially part time sponsor, of course, we show our employers what we do. But this might be like the detail, the granular detail of what I'm doing every day. I don't think that it is important to um, the community team reps, for example, of the program managers and program supporters to see how the, the projects of the team 
needs to be needs to be led or where the team needs more help. So mm-hmm. in one case, uh, yes, I would like to see then in this working group, they want to create what is the goal of this working group, like to focus mm-hmm. on a specific need. And in my opinion, in this context should be the team's needs. And mm-hmm. then to address the, the doubts and the worries about the companies pledging for five for the future, this is one of my greatest hopes that having <laughs> dashboard before the teams, the contribution teams, yeah. we can also have something solid to come back to companies or contributors mm-hmm. that are pledging, contributing to a specific team and say, hey, you're pledging this. This team needs help. Yeah. Are you going to help with this team or you want to remove your pledge because you can't contribute to those things that you are saying that you are committed to? So I... I see having dashboards or a way to track the the projects among all teams as mm-hmm. uh, um, as a tool for us to then claim to people who pledge contribution that okay we need your help in this project so come and help us as you're pledging that you're doing so yes this is what I wanted it is unrelated to which tool we're gonna use yeah. and. Yeah, and also um, to address um, Toby um, point and Nora as well, um, I probably we don't need to track everything. I mean, if I'm having um, if I'm having a conversation with Juan about um, work on Europe, probably the. <laughs> If I have a, if I have a claim, like if I'm no, if I have any type of conversation or things that we might have, is it something that is important to our team? It is relevant for the team to track it. Maybe something it is, something not. If I am uh, in the case of the community, if I'm mentoring an event, this it could be useful information because we have an amount of events, we need an amount of mentors, and we can see easily who is already busy with mentoring and who is not. But if I have a conversation with Courtney about, hey, it would be nice to maybe add this metric, probably this is not that relevant to track. No, so- I think when when uh, we get into folks whose primary work is thinking and reading or holding the many conversations, I certainly don't need to track every conversation, but there are some individuals um, who it would benefit to surface. I'm thinking of Kira in particular. Kira is my coworker at GoDaddy, sponsored full time to work on core, often has assumes roles of core uh, tech release lead or core tech editor release. I forget the full term, but th- that part of the, of the releases, that part involves reading lots of tickets and staying on top of things and then coming in with a very, very formulated response to things. Um, I don't think we need to granularly track conversations and I spent an hour thinking about this, (laughs) but I do think that we need to have some way of acknowledging those who primarily the main thing that they do is going to be thinking and conversations and reading because it could potentially help secure them if it's ever questioned, what do you do? Because we see no metrics. There are some cases of that. Now, Josefa probably doesn't need that justification. (laughs) Just going to take a while, guess. People understand Josefa does things and is very valuable, but there are some contributors who it may benefit. And I'm not presuming to know that Kira officially is making such a request but I also don't want to overlook the fact that for someone in that role, it may be helpful. Coming close to our end of our time together, I wanna thank everybody that is here. Um, I do think that we can work together on forming what the working group within sustainability should look like. I think we definitely understand leading with team dashboards, especially as that's the direction project leadership has set forward primarily 
Um, and then secondarily, tertiary, adding in, being aware that there may be other benefits. But leading out team dashboards certainly does make sense. Um, I think as we conclude this session of things, we'll come out with a, a little bit more of a solid working plan and some of the feedback ideas that are there. Um, but I, I want to thank each of you for being here. Many of you represent some massive amounts of contribution to this project and it shows you're super well informed you've had all of your experiences um it's just a delight to be able to work on all of this with each of you i want to make sure that you know that your opinions and your thoughts around this are really valuable even if you know the outcomes don't line up precisely i don't know that we're going to pick this tool or a different tool or build our own or any of that i'm just glad that i get to make space for all of you Thank you so much, Courtney, for um, hosting all these angles. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, I should note, too, I have reached out to the Scale Consortium folks, our enterprise agencies, to consider what their customer clients may need. They have different ideas of what sustainability looks like sometimes. And also in uh, areas like that, when they assess the health of projects they choose to implement, sometimes that comes with the ability to either fund or send contributors into things. Uh, so... Again, let's make sure we reach every possible pocket of this massive project and make sure our thoughts are heard. Yeah, and see in the comments goodbye. Thank you all. I'll hit end record at this time and let people trickle out as they will or hang. I have a little bit of time.